Hello, I'm Darren Hardy, mentor to CEO and high-performing entrepreneurs and publisher of Success Magazine. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. I am so glad to be here today, and I am excited to share with you an exciting program. We are here today to celebrate the message and legacy of an incredible man, Mr. Jim Rohn. In celebration of Jim Rohn's 85th birthday, Success has gone back into the vaults of the massive Jim Rohn Library and has curated the best of Jim Rohn's transformational training to highlight Jim Rohn's incredible foundational message and strategies. Jim's message of transformation and attitude of service revolutionized the personal development industry and made massive impact on the lives of countless numbers of people. We have personally invited the masters of personal development and key topics to introduce you to Jim's training and bring the message forward by highlighting their own teaching. I'm proud to be part of this very exclusive group. And today, the other masters and I are gonna share with you Jim's 10 foundations for success. You're gonna to wanna to grab a notepad and a pen or pencil for this because this is the heart of Jim Rohn's life-changing philosophy. I'm 25 years old. I'm introduced to a man who I had a chance to go to work for. And over the next five years, the ideas he shared with me not only made me rich, but gave me the foundation for a long-term career of sharing ideas, building business, making profits, uh, hopefully wise investments, made an extraordinary contribution to my life. This unique man, he only went to the ninth grade in school. So the things he shared with me over that five-year period were very simple, very ABC. But that's where I got all of those simple phrases. Let me just review some of them for you very quickly. For things to change for you, you have to change. I kept hoping the government would change and taxes would change and prices would come down and things would get better. And then he said, for things to change for you, Mr. Rohn, you have to change. Wow, what a new revelation. Next, he said, don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. All of this started me on this unique journey of what I now call personal development. Here's another one. This is, don't wish for less problems, wish for more skills. It's not less problems that makes you successful. It's more skills that makes you successful. When I was in my 20s, I was highly ambitious and very driven. I wanted to have it all. I thought if I worked harder, worked faster, worked stronger, I would reach the top. I was pretty successful at that point, and I was doing well, but I was exhausted, and honestly, I was stuck. One December day, it was raining. I will never forget it. I went to hear Jim speak. He looked straight at the audience, and over his spectacles, he asked the audience, how many people here want to have more? Well, I did, of course I did. I was all about more. I pulled out my notebook and I began to take notes, but I didn't hear what I expected. Jim Rohn was saying exactly what I had been missing. He said, success is not something you pursue. What you pursue eludes you. He said, success is something that you attract by the person you become. That is where it all began for me. I continued to learn and grow and listen as Jim was there to guide me every step of the way. Four years only after meeting Jim, when I was 27 years of age, I had a multi-million dollar net worth. And just as importantly, I was creating a life that I loved. I met Jim Rome when I was 17 years old and uh, he had a huge impact on my life and philosophy, the way I looked at life, the way I pursued improving myself. Uh, I went to one of his seminars when I was 17 years old. I had a friend of our family had, um, my mom had talked about, my father had talked about how he used to be such a loser and he'd become so successful. And I went to work for this man on the weekends while I was still in junior high school, moving things. He was buying real estate and turning it over. And I asked him, I said, you know, my father said you used to be such a loser. Now you're so successful. How'd you do it? And only kids can say that. He said, your father said what? And then it was great because after a while he said, well, it's really true. And, uh, and I said, so what happened? He said, I went to a seminar. I said, what, what's a seminar? He says, this, this event where this man comes and he basically shares the best of what he's learned over the last couple of decades of his life. I said, I think I'd like to go to that. I said, could you get me in? And he said, yeah. And I said, 
well, will you? And he said, no. <laughs> and I said, why not? And he said, because you won't value it unless you pay for it. And I said, how much is it? And I'll never forget. He said, it's $35. This is in 1977. I was just about to turn 17 years old and I was working for $40 a week as a janitor. So it was a week's pay. And I went down and I listened to Jim speak and um, you know, I was already a reader. And so I was like finishing something sentences from Think and Grow Rich and things of that nature. People were staring at me, this little 72 year old kid all enthusiastic while he was talking. Um, but fundamentally he shared things that really impacted me to this day. Just the simple ideas like for things to change, you've got to change. For things to get better, you've got to get better. It's such a part of my life now, it seems ridiculous to think anything other than that. And I, I think it spoke to me because I already believed it. It's truth. And I think that's part of Jim's great strength. Here's what success is. The steady progress in reaching your own personal goals. That's what success is. The steady progress in reaching your own personal goals. Designing your life like you want it and making steady progress to get there. That is your personal design. So don't let anybody design your life for you, tell you how you ought to live. Let them give you the principles as they see them. Let them, let them give you the truth as they see it. Let them give you their view from their perspective. But then you take that into account and then you go design your own life. So why Jim? You see, Jim wasn't flashy. He didn't use a lot of big words. Jim's message is always accessible because it resonates inside as true. When you hear Jim talk, you realize that you agree with what he's saying, but you just never thought of it that way before. Sometimes people would go to a Jim Rohn seminar or listen to a Jim Rohn audio program and they'd be hit by something that was so simple, like his idea that your outer world is going to be a reflection of your inner world. And if you want to change your outer world, go to work on yourself. I mean, just a very simple thing like that, that people who were working really, really hard on the outside had never thought about that. And so the reason Jim had such a profound influence was because he was almost homespun, simple, like an American philosopher. He spoke to the heart and in the language of the common man. Because results is the name of the game. There's no purpose in learning just for learning's sake. Wisdom and faith, as powerful as those components are, serve no useful purpose unless they are deposited. So make a note of the word, deposited, wisdom and faith deposited into activity. Wisdom and faith put to work now produces a hotel, produces a, a salt vaccine, uh, produces a city, produces an institution of learning, produces a career, produces a relationship. Right? Ideas and faith, believing that it's possible, that ideas can work miracles, now put to work. Jim would say that these are the basics, and it's common sense, but not common practice. But what Jim did that made it beyond that was he was strategic. He, he can use a, a metaphor out of the Bible, and you never felt like you were being preached to because Jim was a strategic communicator. The problem is not lack of information. The problem is simply, we don't do the information that's been handed to us. Simple stuff. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Anybody can do it. But what's easy to do is easy not to do. Or the guy messed up the saying. The guy says, a Hershey bar a day. You say, no, <laughs> no, you've been watching too much television. It's not Hershey bar, it's what? <laughs> apple. And if you lack the refined intelligence and you go for the Hershey bar instead of the apple, then you've got to put up with your own poor health. It's nobody's fault but your own. A few basics you won't practice, a few ideals you won't let them serve you, then you've got to put up with your own empty bank account, empty heart, empty soul, not enough vitality, not enough health. I'm telling you, anybody that wants to can rearrange all of that. And here's where life change starts. For your notes, I can't give it to you in any simple form. Here it is. It starts with... An apple. Where else would you start if you wanted to improve your life? Jim had a saying that I adored. Anything that's easy to do is also easy not to do. And the reason I like that is because his messages are simplistic but powerful. And that sounds maybe like an oxymoron, but it's true. 
they, they were simplistic and, and basic and fundamental, but yet powerful if an applied properly. Foundations for Success offers a unique window into the practices and philosophies of today's greatest achievers through the timeless teaching of Jim Rohn. Each of the 10 video modules includes all the video training from Jim Rohn as well as an introduction video from a modern master, plus workbooks and downloadable audio files so that you can listen on the go. You don't read Jim Rohn's books. You study them, underline them, highlight them, use post-it notes. That's the way you read Jim's books. What's beautiful about Jim Rohn's truths are so simple. You know, and simple things are easy for us in a world of such complexity. I always say to people, you know, people talk about we're in the information age. That's a joke. The information age died a long time ago. We're, we're just, we're drowning in information. We're starving for wisdom. That's what's so unbelievably extraordinary about Jim Rohn. You don't have to know him personally to be influenced and challenged and changed by his message. His message is timeless because it's about an attitude and a mindset that will lead to actions that will generate success in everyone, including you. Key phrase, self-protection leads to mediocrity. Self-service leads to fortune. Self-investment leads to fortune. The reality is success is boring. It's repetition of fundamentals. And that's what Jim preached. The thing I loved about Jim is it wasn't the flashy new thing. It were timeless principles that most time in life, we need to be reminded more than we need to be instructed. We need to be reminded of what works, not told the next great new thing that's gonna change your life. Jim just had the ability to, to share truth. You know, truth is truth is truth is truth, right? And he would take uh, circumstances, take situations, observe life events and dwell it down, just like gravity is gravity, right? There's no arguing gravity. And he had the ability to describe truth and share truth. Shelf said, if you're getting your shoe shine and the shoe shine boy has done an exceptionally great job and you look down, you got one of the world's all time great shines, and you pay him and now you reach in your pocket and get a handful of change, shall I give him one quarter or two quarters tip from a neat shine? Shof said this, if two amounts pop in your mind, always go for the higher amount. Here's what he said, become a two quarter person. And I said, you know, what difference would that make? He said, all the difference in the world in whether you're a one quarter or a two quarter person. Wow. He said, if you just give one quarter and say, no, I'll just give him one quarter. He said, that'll bother you the rest of the day. <laughs> you'll look down and see this all time great shine and you'll say, I gotta be a little cheap one quarter. <laughs> and guess what you are? A little cheap <laughs> one quarter. But he said, if you go for the second quarter, Shof said, you can't believe the happiness and the and the better day you can buy for yourself for just an extra quarter. One, the smile on the shoeshine boy's face. Let that linger in your consciousness the rest of the day. And you don't have to be ridiculous, but by being generous, it's just that little extra. By being the little extra, that's what counts most. His message was good then, it's better now. And every, I, I would pray that everybody gets exposed to it because there'll be, instantaneously better off once they absorb it and make it intrinsic to their being, their whole life will be better and the world will be better because the world gets better as I teach in Chicken Soup books one person at a time. I think Jim Rohn's legacy will always continue because the principles he taught are not only life changing, but they're really eternal. I mean, they work. Truthfully, if Jim would have lived 200 years ago, they would have worked. And if he would have lived 200 years from now, they work. I mean, one of the things I think about great truths is that they're timeless. Jim Rohn's ability to see good in people who were lost was unique. Friends of mine today who, uh, whose lives were 
inalterably changed because of the message of hope that Rome gave to them. There's never been another person like, like Jim. Never. Make this note now. Activity finishes the miracle process of turning nothing into something. Activity finishes the miracle process. I'm positive that's why the formula was given of six days of working miracles and one day of rest to ponder how it's going. How is my miracle working process working? Have I missed some? Devote six days to the working of miracles, the seventh day to rest and reflect and go back over and a bit of study. But see if you can't now come up with a plan to increase your activity or refine your activity, sharpen it so that it produces major results. Jim talks about the day that turns your life around. We've all had those moments when enough was enough, or we make a big decision to finally do something that we knew we should have done all along. Change is always entirely possible. I love the way Jim said this, life doesn't get better by chance, it gets better by change. I, I think my life is an example of it because I started with nothing. I didn't have a car, I'm in selling real estate on a motorcycle, and I have no dress clothes, didn't even have a suit. But I luckily found people like Jim that I just internalized all the things they said. I was a sponge and very coachable. You must have an overwhelming desire to achieve that which you wish to accomplish. And Jim Rohn, again, was a master of teaching disciplines. And those that adapted and, and internalized them, they got their desires because they got their discipline. And without that discipline, you probably not get your desires. Don't wish it were easier. Wish you were better. Think about that one. In my language, he's saying, we can all have more, do more, achieve more, and be more if we are willing to accept the personal challenge to look within and do whatever is necessary to be a better person. We cannot stop learning ever about ourselves, but we can indeed live an extraordinary life if we choose that path for ourselves. But we are always responsible and accountable for the journey we take to achieve that goal. I heard a knock at the door. I go to the door. And there's a little girl standing there about this tall selling Girl Scout cookies. And she gave me one of the finest sales presentations I've ever heard. Special deal, several flavors, this whole package of stuff, $2. And with a big smile, she very politely asked me to buy. And I wanted to. Big problem. I'm broke. I don't have. Two dollars. And to this day, I can remember the pain and the embarrassment. I'm a father. I'm a husband. I've been to college. I'm working. I'm 25. I don't have two dollars. And I didn't want to tell her that for some reason. <laughs> so I did what I thought was next best. I lied. To it. I said, hey, look, I've already bought lots of Girl Scout cookies. I've still got plenty stacked in the house, which was not true. But it seemed to get me off the hook for the moment. She said, well, gosh, that's wonderful. Thank you very much. And she went away. When she left, I closed the door. And that was the day I said to myself, I don't want to live like this anymore. I've had it with Lion, and I've had it with being broke. I'm never going to let this happen to me ever again. I promised that day I would work as hard as possible and would always carry plenty. It took me a little while, but now I do. It was one of those reasons. And I guess I carry plenty for two reasons. One is the way it makes me feel, but also 
in case I bump into another Girl Scout selling cookies. Right? I'm ready. Your life is never the same after you discover continuous learning. And Jim emphasized this all the time, is leaders are readers. If you want to be more successful on the outside, you've got to become more on the inside, that you must be continually upgrading your knowledge and skills, that you may be only one idea away from transforming your life. And so you could never listen to Jim talk in any format without reaffirming your profound commitment to learning and learning and learning. And so I love that part of his message because if a person gets that, only that from Jim, goal setting and philosophy and other things are all very important. But if they only get that one thing is that continuous learning is your key to unlimited success and growth. They only get that. That alone is life transforming. When people plateau, they get really unhappy. I always tell people, there's one secret to happiness. It's one word, progress. Progress equals happiness. If you're making progress, even if you're not where you want to be, but you start to transform your body, you start to deal with your relationship, you start to do something about your business or your economics, progress makes people feel alive because we're designed to grow and out of growing, we have something to give. Yesterday's learning won't keep me where I am today. I've got to go and do today's learning. In other words, you, you, it never stops. I remember buying my first personal growth kit. And, and, and you know, it was, back then it was a whole month's salary. It was a lot of money for me. But I'll tell you what I found. I discovered the greatest investment I ever made was buying that first kit because it got me on a path of growth, which created an appetite for me to grow that has never stopped. And, and so if I wanted to stop growing, I wouldn't because I just see the benefits of it in so many ways that I, I just can't even imagine going one day without learning something, experiencing something that's really new, and then passing it on to others. To me, I call the mind a parachute, and it really open, only works well when it's open, and that's the way people have to be. They have to be open to suggestion. They have to be open to uh, listen to someone who has achieved. Uh, and again, Jim, of course, earned the right to have people listen to him because of the great stuff that he taught. Fabulous. You must take on responsibility for your own education. Now, those first few years of our life, right, we were forced to. Through high school, you got to go to school. Someone says, well, I've finished school. Well, it's okay to finish school, but here's the clue. Zig Ziglar said it well. Don't finish your education. Education is a lifetime matter. Education goes on and on. Education gets you a job. Self-education gets you rich. Formal education make you a living. Self-education make you a fortune. So I'm asking you to do like you're doing today. Never cease your quest for knowledge. Develop a thirst for ideas that can be life-changing. And then pass it along to your children. What's been so exciting for me Ever since I learned this stuff, I also learned ways to pass it along. Next, we'll learn the 10 foundations for success from the masters with the from the vault footage from the master himself. These are the success principles and strategies that make all the difference. Foundations for Success offers a unique window into the practices and philosophies of today's greatest achievers through the timeless teaching of Jim Rohn. Each of the 10 video modules includes all the video training from Jim Rohn as well as an introduction video from a modern master, plus workbooks and downloadable audio files so that you can listen on the go. What Jim teaches is his method of developing a guidance system for success so you make your dreams come true, you avoid danger, and you maximize your opportunities to enrich your life and source and serve everyone else to enrich theirs. And he said, here's the biggest clue. You can have what I talked about in academic education, but the more important education, because most people, when school's over, they shut the book and that's it. He said, the best education has always been, always will be self-education. You are like the David. You've got to sculpt yourself on a full-time basis and chip out everything that's not David. Stip out the stuff that's not disciplined, get rid of it. Because a formal education, Jim said, gives you a job. Self-education makes you rich. Here's the first one I learned. Your income is primarily determined by your philosophy. 
You know, I didn't learn that until I was 25 years old. They never taught it in high school. I went to college one year and never heard it. Your income is primarily determined by your philosophy, not the economy. And here's the philosophy. Success is something you attract by becoming an attractive person. Success is not something you pursue. It's something you attract. Everybody's got to move forward to see what's possible because for the first time ever in history, all of us can be more than we ever imagined. Succeed more, think more, increase more, be, have more love, have more joy, have more happiness and fulfillment. Understand, give yourself the biggest, the best, the strongest, the hardiest biceps and triceps as you move forward into the philosophy of personal success and achievement because you can do more than you ever imagined. Jim said the little difference is attitude, and the big difference is whether it's positive or negative. A positive attitude is the single most outwardly identifiable trait demonstrated by a winning human being. It is pure and simple optimism in the face of all odds. Diseases of attitude. It's never that pleasant to talk about the negative, but we got to talk about it because life is part negative. These attitude diseases are like weeds that grow in the garden. It's a normal part of life. Here's a good phrase to note. Negative is normal. It's not successful, but it's normal. It's part of life. And here's the next key, in my opinion. You must learn to handle the negative. Don't ignore it. Handle it. Now, I know some people teach the other way. And listen to them, and listen to me, and then make up your own mind, right? Don't be a follower, be a student. But I say you've got to handle the negative. You don't have to live in it, you don't have to dwell on it, but you do have to handle it, my opinion. I know some people teach just turn your head real quick and say, there's no weeds, there's no weeds, there's no weeds. They'll take your garden. <laughs> so you've got to handle the negative. Attitude truly is either the lock on or key to your door of success. And no one hits this home better than the mentor to the masters, Jim Rohn. Philosophy, this is where the value of human life begins to show versus all other life forms. I call it simply a guidance system. Settling on certain questions and making decisions about what direction in life you're gonna take. Setting goals, making plans, this guidance system. I've boiled it down to each one's personal philosophy, a guidance system. Jim spoke an enormous amount about goals, uh, virtually in every single talk. Uh, the subject of goal setting uh, was so profound for me. Uh, I say over and over to my audiences, I say that as you go through life, you come to crossroads or turning points. The turning point for me was when I discovered goals, when I was 24 years old. And what I did is I wrote down a list of goals on a piece of paper, and I probably lost the list. But within 30 days, my whole life had changed profoundly. I later learned that the process of continual goal setting every day, writing them down. Now, Jim talks about a journal, I talk about a workbook, a school notebook that you can get for uh, a couple of dollars. And every day, sit down and write down your goals in the present tense without looking back at the goals that you wrote yesterday. So every day, you're forced to remember and to think again. And Jim talked about this over and over again because as you write down your goals, they become clearer and clearer to you. I'm telling you, this stuff changed my life, altered the course of my life. From milk and cows to sitting on this stool. Incredible. What a journey. And part of the explosive stimulation started when I met Earl Schoff. And he asked me, have you got a list of goals? And I said, no. And he said, then I can guess your bank balance. I thought, whoa. I immediately started studying the art. And the art and the accomplishments of it helped to change my life and qualified me to come and speak to you today.
There's no greater way to guarantee you'll have a happy, healthy, and prosperous life than if you continually work on being, having, and achieving more of the things you really want. Clear, written goals give you a roadmap that will guide you to personal and professional success. Goals enable you to overcome any obstacle and make the possibilities for your future achievement unlimited. If you'll start this glorious journey of being meticulous, deliberate, and hardworking about setting your goals for the day, setting your goals for the month and the year, setting your goals for your family and yourself and your business and your colleagues, start thinking forward. Here's what you will become, a major contributor not only to yourself, but a major contributor to others. And that's exactly what you want. To learn to lead is to not only learn to increase your influence, to learn to lead is to be able to uh, give direction, uh, be able to set the agenda, begin to prioritize what you want in your life. Most people, they don't lead their life. They accept their life. They're passive. They're, they're not writing their own story. They're reading the, what somebody else wrote about them. And the great thing about leadership is that it really begins with me. So when people say, well, John, you know, I want to lead. Who, who do I start leading? I always say, hey, start with yourself. If, let's put it this way. If you wouldn't follow yourself, why should anyone else want to follow you? Here's the real challenge for leadership. Leadership is the challenge to be something more than mediocre. The challenge to be something more than mediocre. It was said of Abraham Lincoln, when his mother died, she, he was at her bedside when she died. And her last words to him were, be somebody, Abe. And if that story is true, he must have taken it to heart. Be somebody. That's a good challenge. Be somebody. And, and I think that once, once we begin to understand that leadership skills can be developed, and the reason they can be developed is leadership is influence. That's all it is. Nothing more, nothing less. It's not title. It's not position. It's not tenure. It's influence. And the day that I understood that's what leadership was, then I realized you can teach a person how to increase their influence by adding value to people, by being relationally strong. Uh, a person can go from small influence to greater influence, and if you can do that, then you're already leading at a higher capacity. One of my favorite all-time quotes of Jim is this, your income is determined by your philosophy, which in my language means, you know what? you're pretty much gonna earn what you believe you're worth. Jim knew that knowing your own strengths, knowing your own limitations is huge if you want to be successful, because believe me, it is so much easier to build your success on the innate talent you were born with, even if it's talking like me, than trying to develop the skill sets that you already find difficult to learn and achieve right from the beginning. Make this note now on Harvest, in due time, and for those who qualify, in due time, and for those who have obeyed this extraordinary law that says life was not designed to give you what you need, life was designed to give you what you deserve. If you didn't plant in the spring, then no harvest comes your way. If you planted little, then you're not going to receive a lot. Life was not designed to give you what you need. It was designed to give you what you deserve. Ooh, I love this. But I think most people hear this incorrectly. See, in my language, what Jim is saying is quit expecting life to give you what you think you deserve when you did absolutely nothing to earn it. Jim even says, if you don't plant in the spring, then don't expect a harvest, which means if you're not willing to do the work, you're not going to see the results. Here's the bottom line. Success, happiness, wealth, health. These are not things we deserve, no matter what actions we take to achieve these things on our own. Because let's look at the word deserve. Deserved means entitled. And entitled means we don't even have to work for them. Seriously? 
No way. In fact, when people begin to believe they deserve these things, they begin to stop working for them, planning for them, and fighting for them. What does it mean to be a good communicator? One of the things that Jim believed that you, you got to study. He was a perpetual student. I remember when I spoke in Malaysia and he was on the front row and he took out a tablet to start taking notes, which he always did that. And I said, Jim, stop. And this is in the middle of my presentation and people were startled. I said, Jim, this is all your stuff on steroid. <laughs> I've been reading you for years and listening to you. This is your stuff. You just don't recognize it the way that I deliver it. And, and the audience all cracked up. But to be an effective communicator, you got to study. You got to hone your skills. You've got to practice. And, and you are a person who is always interested and fascinated with life. Part of what I learned from Jim that if you want to be a great communicator, you got to be a good listener. What you want to make sure is that from now on, you don't treat ca conversations casually. Because casualness brings casualties. Not only on the freeway, but in conversation. How people live their lives is a result of the story they believe about themselves. And so when you speak, what you do is you introduce a new story, an expanded vision of something positive. Let actions speak, but make sure the actions don't substitute for the words. Make sure you say it. And if you'll make sure you'll say it, you'll get better at it. You'll get the practice. You'll learn to put more feelings in it. You'll learn to say it well, say it better. And this whole process of communication for you, if you don't treat any of it casually, will start to grow. One of the things I loved most about Jim Rohn's messages were that they were all very simple concepts, yet so powerful. In fact, I once compared his delivery to being hit with a velvet hammer, so soft and gentle, yet he really knew how to drive those messages home. One of the key concepts Jim taught on the subject of influence was that you must be real with people. You must have integrity. There is a difference between presentation and persuasion. First you learn to make a presentation. Then you learn the art of persuasion. Because I got a little faked out on this at first. Right when I first got in sales, Mr. Schof got me involved in sales first. And he gave me this great hope. He said, you know, most people are nice. In fact, he said, there's only about a half a dozen real nasty, horrible, miserable people in the world. That's what he said. Now, he said they move around a lot. And uh, <laughs> you're liable to run into one once in a while. But he said, hey, look, most people are nice. You're going to have a great time out there. Get out there and see what life is all about. So I got this incredible education in sales. But uh, he gave me this, you know, how to make a good presentation. And I got pretty good at it. In fact, I used to hear people say, hey, you got to be one of the world's great salesmen. I thought, wow, the man has taught me well. Somebody else would say, hey, I've heard them all. You got to be one of the best. I thought, I've got it made. And then one day, the awful truth dawned on me. I said, wait a minute, something's wrong. If I'm one of the world's great salesmen, how come they ain't buying? <laughs> I was getting faked out. See, I was being congratulated for my presentation. I had yet to master the art of persuasion. So there's a difference between presentation and persuasion. Abundance, it's a topic everybody's interested in, but very few people really understand how to make it happen. It's that elusive quality, the ability to have the life that you want for yourself, for your family, for those you love, the ability to travel, the ability to see what you wanna see, do what you wanna do, and experience what you wanna experience on your terms. How do we create it? When I was 17 years old, I had the privilege of going and hearing this man, Jim Rohn. And uh, I remember I pulled up to the South Coast Plaza Hotel 
in Orange County, California and my 1968 Baja bug and uh, turned the thing off and handed the keys to the gentleman and said, take good care of this baby as it exploded in the back. <laughs> it had that little afterburn that was going on. I was wearing a two-piece blue leisure suit I got at the thrift store, a fake gold chain, and I went in there to go check out this event and figure out how I was gonna take things to the next level. And uh, as a 17 year old boy, I'd read a lot of books. I was very passionate. I was a man looking for answers, a boy looking for answers. And then this silver haired gentleman who had so much wisdom stood up and he shared so much that night that touched me in just three and a half hours. But in the area of abundance, he answered a question for me that I had not been able to answer. And it shifted the quality of my life as I'm sure this session will for you. The question he asked at the time was, how is it possible that some people earn twice as much money as you do, or four times, or five times, or 10 times as much money in the same amount of time? And he said, the answer is because they found a way to add more value. That is the secret to abundance. Do more for others than anyone else on earth. And if you can do that, you can build a brand, you can build a company, you can build a life, you can build friendships that are beyond compare. In the Bible, it says, if you wish to become great, learn to become the servant of many. Which as Jim used to say is, you know, that means there's nothing wrong with wanting to be great, but greatness comes from serving a large number of people or at a deep level, one of the two. We all start out in life with one thing in common. We all have the same amount of time. Now it's just a matter of what we do with it. That's why I always say that killing time isn't murder, it's suicide. Time is just so valuable. Want to get a task done? Then go find a busy person and he or she will perform and get it done. Why? They've learned in life how to prioritize their time. The best kept secret of the rich is not genius. It doesn't take that much of a genius to become financially independent. The best kept secret of the rich is not brilliance. You know, no one can tell the story, you know, a hundred times better than another person. Nobody, nobody can be that good. So the best kept secret of the rich is not genius. The best kept secret of the rich is the management of time. Time, key phrase. We all have a limited supply. My father had 90 years, but it seemed, 93 years, but it seemed short. In his seemingly long life of 93 years, it was short because it, it just seems like if we only had more time. The key is time is precious. Life is not just the passing of time. Life is not just the passing of time. Life is a collection of experiences. Their frequency and their intensity. So just start where you are. It doesn't matter where you're at right now, it just matters that you begin. The hardest step to take always is the first step, right? The journey of a thousand miles begins with that first single step. That's the hardest step of a thousand mile journey. The hardest step is the first one. So just begin wherever you are. Look, if you're broke, start out broke. If you're scared, start out scared. You know, there's some interesting statistics. Of all the millionaires that exist, 90% of them started out broke. The formula for success, take heavy action on a good idea, right? That's the ratio. Now here's the key. Don't wait till you've learned two or 3,000 things because that way you'll use up all the time and you could wind up smart and broke. And hey, it's okay to be dumb and broke. But if a guy's smart and broke, that's pitiful. Don't let your learning lead to knowledge. You'll become a fool. Let your learning lead to action. You can become wealthy. So I think having a mentor is really a place to interact. It's somebody to uh, maybe that knows the road ahead. You know, it's not that they're smarter or better, it's just that they've had different life experiences. And a mentor can help you anticipate, and anticipation is great power. 
These are called questions to ponder. First question is one of the major questions of the world. Why? Why should you try? Why read that many books? Why go that far? Why earn that much? Why share that much? Why learn all that? Why get up that early? Why put yourself through that much? Why try for all that? Good question. Why? One of the best answers to why is the second question. Why not? What else are you going to do with your life? Why not see how many books you can read, how far you can go, how much you can earn, how many friends you can make, how much personality you can develop, influence you can have, how many things you can accomplish, how far you can go and what you can see. Why not? You got to stay here till you go. <laughs> why not? The third question is, why not you? Why not you? Some people have done the most incredible things with limited start. Why not you? Some people have done so well, they get to go, they get to see it all, they get to do it. They get to be there. They get to have it, they get to enjoy it. Why not you? Why not you watching the morning mist rise over the mountains of Scotland? Exploring the mysteries of Spain, soaking up history in London. Why not you? You got to see the world, you got to read the books, you've got to do the enterprises, you've got to be involved in commerce and love and travel and experiences. You got to do it all. Why not you? You've got to know the results that come from splendid discipline. There's nothing like a view from the top. And the last question is, why not now? Don't postpone your better future any longer. Get at it tomorrow with new vigor. Get you some new books. Ask some new questions. Set some new goals. Get you a new journal. Start your projects book. Get a game plan going. Do some more reading. Start to make changes. Have conversations. Make contact. And do it now. And if you will, I have a feeling one of these days we'll be hearing your story. You'll make us a phone call, write us a letter, get in touch with us and let us know what's happening to you. Jim's message goes beyond positive thinking and abstract concepts and dives into the nitty gritty of transformation and successful living. This is the essential stuff that no one teaches but makes all the difference. Success is pulling out all the stops and has created over 10 hours of core training broken into weekly modules. We have so much available to us that most people don't see. And I did not do what I'm doing now for 14 years because I don't have a college degree, because I didn't believe that I can compete with people with PhDs and MBAs. I didn't believe that I could train people how to do something I've never done. I was suffering from possibility blindness. So you have to get to a place within yourself that's saying, I'm not going out like this. <laughs> No, I've got to do something. I've got to do something. And I say, find something that's your passion, something that you can pour yourself into, something that you make the decision that you're going to master, something that when you do it, you operate out of the thinking of Henry David Thoreau, who said, do not go where the path may lead, but go where there's no path and leave a trail. Something that says, I got this, I mastered this. The reality is too many people are attracted to their distractions. They're attracted to the things that stand between them and the life they want to live. So you got to make a decision someday that you're going to do the work, you're going to pay the price, you're going to get better, and you're going to go out in life and live the stories that you want to tell. Everything in life comes from having the courage to break out of your comfort zone and take the first step. People who are thinking of taking this program realize that this could be the first step. You say, well, it costs this amount of money, it costs that amount of money. One of Jim's great observations is it's not the money that it costs, it's the money it will cost you not to have this information. I read hundreds of books and spent thousands of dollars going to all types of seminars. Now, all of this information is in one place. If you're gonna buy this series, you're not spending a single penny. 
you're making an investment in yourself. If you think education is expensive, try ignorance. You can't just listen to this or watch this program once. You gotta absorb it again and again and again, because otherwise you'll just beat yourself up and go, well, I learned this stuff, how come I'm not applying it? Um, you know, Jim's big phrase that stayed with me was repetition is the mother of skill. And by repeating something, you know, I, I really believe a certain amount of repetition happens, you understand something very quickly intellectually, but then getting it to where you emotionally understand it, you know, you might understand if you jump over that fence, you're gonna get bit by that dog, but if you've ever been bit, <laughs> you have a different level of understanding, right? This program, I think, can add a tremendous dimension to the overall success of a person. That's why I love the foundation for success. And if you look at a huge building, you won't see the thing that holds it up, but that's the foundation. You don't see it, but without it, this large building wouldn't stand. And that's true of success. Without the ability to learn these concepts, I don't think you can become successful. The choice, Jim said, is yours. But why not see how much you can do, how much joy you can bring into the world, because the purpose of life is to live fully and have an ever-expanding, delightful life. The things that he gave us, he allowed you to see it and take ownership of it and created the thirst within you to want to do it. And that, to me, was the key to his success and how people who get this program, when they go through this over and over and over again, because faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing, they will never be the same again. And if you go to the best, you get the best advice, you get the best counsel, you get the best direction, you get the best vision, you get the best motivation. Jim's the best. We're all here saying that. And the reason we're saying that is because of what he did for us and what he did within us. I used to, when I would go hear speakers that I greatly admired, I always wanted to get on the front row. I wanted to get as close to him as I possibly can. And through this series, this is a kind of a front row seat. You get as close to Jim as you possibly can. Maybe like me, you consider Jim an old friend and you're hoping to get reacquainted. Or perhaps you're just getting to know Jim Rohn, this guy that everyone keeps talking about, and you're looking for a good place to start. No matter who you are, or where you are in your success journey. I have no doubt you'll be enlightened and emboldened by this collection. Each week you'll receive a new module containing carefully selected segments from Jim's life work. We've scoured the archives and found the footage from the 1980s all the way to the early 2000s. We even opened up the vault and uncovered video of some of Jim's earliest seminars, which haven't been seen by anyone for years. And, as promised, an extraordinary modern-day master who studied under the guidance of the master maker himself, Mr. Jim Rohn, will introduce each module. You'll get to hear their stories, along with their own philosophies about success and personal achievement. As your personal guide, I will be there as you complete each module, with some parting words or maybe even some advice, and maybe a homework assignment to help you take action on the new wisdom that you've just gained. Along with the video file, you'll receive an audio-only file as well. You'll also get a progressive workbook that you can download and use as you go through each module. These will be all delivered to your Foundations for Success private access membership site. There will also be plenty of opportunities for you to network and share your thoughts with your fellow companions who will be with you on this journey. And each module will contain links to download a special video or audio bonuses, allowing you to gain additional insights and learn even more. These are the 10 foundations for success and the core of Jim's transformational training. If you practice these principles and learn from Jim and listen to the words and the experiences of the masters, you've got a pretty solid foundation on which to build a life of success. Mark Victor Hansen will teach about philosophy and your personal guidance system. Dennis Waitley will explain the importance of attitude and how to unlock your potential with a few simple shifts. Brian Tracy will teach about the importance of goal setting. Jim always said, destination is determined by direction. Learning to set goals will help you create a roadmap to success. John Maxwell will explain the importance of becoming a strong leader so you can maximize your time, energy, and get results. 
Connie Podesta will share her unique insights about lifestyle and how to design an extraordinary life of meaning, abundance, and influence. Les Brown will bring you the tips and tools for mastering the art of communication to create deeper connections. Tom Hopkins, of course, will discuss the skill of influence and why it's critical to your success in sales or in any endeavor in which you need to persuade others. And Tony Robbins will share the strategies for creating a life of abundance and wealth. Harvey McKay will talk about productivity and share his thoughts about how to maximize your most valuable asset with the success ratios that make all the difference. And I will be talking about action. You can massively change your life any day you choose, and I will help you create an action plan to take your success to the next level. Thank you, thank you for being here today. For learning from my mentor, Jim Rohn, and from some of today's master thought leaders. Their wisdom and experience is awe-inspiring, right? Thank you for investing in yourself and in your own growth and your commitment to continued learning. I know I took notes, I hope that you did as well. There is so much that is possible, so much that you and I can and will achieve and experience and enjoy. I'm excited about the future and the journey ahead. When you connect your choices to your desires and your dreams, you can achieve great things. Thank you. Foundations for Success offers a unique window into the practices and philosophies of today's greatest achievers through the timeless teaching of Jim Rohn. Each of the 10 video modules includes all the video training from Jim Rohn as well as an introduction video from a modern master, plus workbooks and downloadable audio files so that you can listen on the go. Foundations for Success. This once-in-a-lifetime training program is available today as part of this special promotion for $495 and includes over 40 hours of additional bonuses and even more surprise materials. Success has created a payment option so you can get lifetime access today with three payments of $175. To order Foundations for Success and to claim all your bonuses, click Get Started Today.